With all the news from WTCN-TV's expanded news-gathering facility. WTCN-TV, Channel 11. This is Channel 11 News at 10. Miles and I worked together in this studio for 11 years. There are a lot of memories we share, from fascinating news stories to some very funny moments, and yes, even a few arguments, most of which I'm convinced she thinks she won. But Pat won't be sitting up here any longer because life is taking her down a different path. You know, I was telling a friend of mine the other day, it was like falling off of a wagon, and I was running behind it trying to get back on for the longest time, and now it's the wagon's kind of so far ahead of me, I, I'm not, I'm just kind of waving now mm -hmm. at the people who are still on it. It seems so long ago since Pat Miles sat down at this desk in the CARE 11 newsroom. Frame memories of her daughters, stacks of dust-covered bestsellers and golf guides remind us of the avid reader, mother, co-worker, and friend whose career has somehow been frozen in time. I kept thinking I was going to go back to work, and I kept thinking I was going to get well, and um, and so I, I didn't plan anything because I was thinking that all of these things were, were going to somehow turn around. And so now I think I've just now kind of come to the realization that it's probably not, and so now I better start thinking about mm -hmm. the rest of my life. Tell me about the state of uh, your physical situation. Mm. Well, I'm actually going to have more surgery in December. I think my eyeball is as good as it's going to get. So my goal now is to get my two eyes to look the same. Mm -hmm. One uh, is smaller than the other because of all the surgeries. And also I have a, an eyelid that's drooping. So I've finally convinced my doctor to, um, to repair my eyelid. What is it like on a daily basis? Well, it's, um, what happened was because of all the scarring in my left eye, it's scarred over all the glands that produce tears in your eye. So I don't produce any, any tear drops in my eye. I only produce mucus, which is a painful thing to produce in your eye. Have you ever had severely chapped lips? I do right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like having a severely uh, chapped eye. Oh, that'd be irritating. It is. How do you get relief from it? You don't. You can put drops in, but, um, but there's no way to get relief from it. Do you view TV being over? That career's over? Um, Right now, I, I don't think I'd be able to do television. And, and one of the reasons, and it's not just because, um, you know, one eye is lopsided. Uh, I think because of the dryness I have in my eye, I don't know that I'd be able to tolerate looking at, into the lights. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I mean, it's been your life's work. Right. Sad. Very sad. I, I always, I think I said I wanted it to be my choice. Pat's 30-plus years of success on television began in Columbia, Missouri, as a master's student. But it wasn't long before her intelligence, wit, and trademark blue eyes landed her a seat next to a begrudging broadcasting legend. Co-anchors, young women out of journalism school, you didn't want to do it. And I, I remember you said, now, Pat, don't take it personally, but I don't want you up here. Pat learned from the best and made him and every anchor she worked with better. How to talk Minnesotan. Not bad. That's your language. I was wondering about that. You bet. In 1988, she left WCCO's 10 o'clock news to spend more time with her family by joining ours. Good evening, everyone. Governor we soon learned Pat wouldn't allow herself to be tied to the anchor desk. The she gave us insight on crises around the world in her documentaries or if this and let us rub elbows Minnesota. with Minnesota's rich and famous and primetime specials. Hi, Janet. Pat, how are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. In journalism, we live vicariously, and our excitement comes from the excitement of what's happening in the world and in other people's lives. So I miss sort of being in touch with that. Um, I especially missed it on September the 11th. I, I felt like somehow I was, you know, not contributing because I wasn't there. How are you doing inside here? In my head? Yeah. Um, I'm a crazy person. <laughs> 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 no, it's been a tough couple of years. I mean, I've learned a lot about myself. 
But I, I have believed from the get-go that this has happened to me for a reason. What the reason is, I don't know. But I do think it's happened to me for a reason. And that what happens is meant to be in my life. It has been a big journey of self-discovery, it hasn't has. it? It has. It really has. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that is the reason. While she's earned numerous accolades for her journalism, it's that bold perspective on camera that won the hearts of loyal fans who continue to write and call every day to check on her health. A professional with style, a fierce competitor with the highest integrity, Pat was a perfectionist in every aspect of her career. I got to do it again. But aside from all that stuff, we really liked her for her lighter side. No, wrong, wrong chair. There you go. What we hope to show here, Paul and Pat, is that, in fact, you can curb the... About the season's best toys. You can handle, or call Duracell's Happy whole thing Happy holidays! Has yeah. anyone noticed that when you put those sunglasses on, Paul and I appear about 10 years younger and much better looking? Humor, after all, is still the best medicine. How's it been on your family? Horrible. Horrible. I've been just horrible to live with. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, it's been tough on everybody, I think especially on the kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went from, you know, a, a career mom who came home at 7 o'clock at night and never cooked to, um, you know, cooking nine different entrees and forcing them to eat them all. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute, what, who are you? What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. Tell me about legally because of the changes that have happened to your life. What are you doing there? Or do you want to talk about that? Oh, no, I'm not doing anything legally. Mm -hmm. Contemplating that? No. No. Are you winking under there? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, tell me about the future. What's, uh, what's in store? The future? I don't know. I, um, I think you know me well enough to know that I'm fairly resourceful, and I'm sure I'll come up with things to keep myself interested and alive. And radio opportunity? Well, I'm just, you know, I don't know about that. I started out in radio, you know, before I ever did television. Colorado. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I, I've told many people. Um, I don't think people know you were the news director in radio. Right. And tell them how big your news department was. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. You know, and usually when, um, <clears throat> when careers in television come to an end, you know how it is, and it's goodbyes, and it's cake, and it's hugs, and it's tears, and it's kisses, and, and all of that. You certainly haven't been afforded that opportunity, given your circumstances. No, but I, I do plan to come back into the station, and um, I'm hoping that, you know, they'll bake a cake, or I could bake one, actually, and bring yeah. it in. Yeah, why don't you bake nine <laughs> or ten and bring them in? Um, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't go into the station because I, it would... I think I would have been too emotional about it at the time, and, and it would have been too depressing. And so now I feel like I'm strong enough to do that, because I really do want to come back in and see everybody and, you know, say goodbye for that portion of my life. Mm -hmm. And the part of the goodbye that would typically take place would be, you know, the old last newscast on the air, right. where you'd be given an opportunity to right. say goodbye to the, the people who watched you and supported you for so many years. Right. This is why I'm, I'm doing this with you now, because God knows I, I didn't want to do another story on my eye. <laughs> right. But I do think it's important. I've, I've been extraordinarily lucky, and uh, people have been extraordinarily kind and supportive of me. Uh, I've been very blessed by this community, and I owe them a lot. Thanks for watching. Well, Pat, we'll certainly miss you, and yeah, uh, when you will. do come back in, we will have one or two or three or four cakes out here. Oh, at least. <laughs> mm -hmm. if not. And, and I'm hoping she brings some her own. Yeah. And I want to taste this stuff. Well, I've that been she's over doing. there for dinner, and, and since she's had all this time off, she really is a very good cook. Uh -huh. And she spent a lot of time working at it because it just occupies her time and things mm -hmm. of that nature. I arrived over there one day with my wife, though, out in the yard were cattle. Oxen, <laughs> yeah, a dump truck full of tofu. Uh, Are they branded? I said, what's that? She said, tonight's dinner. <laughs> you know, we can still irritate her every time we do. That's simply science. Yeah, you and I <laughs> do that to her. Just, just irritate the heck out of Pat. That's where that came from. <laughs>